Welcome to the Coach's Preview Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. And today we're talking about tonight's matchup, the WCTV football game of the week. We've got Independence High School making a visit to Centennial High School. And we're going to start off uh, with Coach Kreisky, who's the head football coach at Centennial High School. Coach, welcome. Welcome. How are you doing today? Doing just fine. Hey, Coach, I wanted to start by I mentioned this. I know I've mentioned this in the past when we've had you as a guest on the show. Uh, you're juggling a lot of things right now. I mean, you're not only uh, the head football coach. There's a lot that goes with that. But you're also the school's athletic director. Talk about the challenges that you've faced uh, so far this year. Well, you know, um, you know, pretty much starting off in, in June, whenever we let some of the athletes back on campus, you know, with getting them in with the temperature checks and making sure we're social distancing. Um, you know, I thought it went well. I think I thought it went well the month of June and July. We did a good job uh, making sure all all sports that, that were that came on campus. So we took their temperature, asked them the questions each day, and when they were in their activities. If it was nothing that was too physical, then they had their uh, either gator up or their mask on. Um, so I thought all coaches did a great job. And then moving into August, as we're getting ready for, you know, we played uh, Ravenwood um, two weeks ago home. So, I mean, that was that was a task. We ta taped off the home and away bleachers um, and our backside hill going up to our practice field. We put X's over there for our student sections, uh, socially distancing. Um, you know, I thought everything went well. Um, our last home game, and I think, um, you know, Ravenwood did a great job in, in the visitor stand, uh, stands and also in the, the side that we put them um, socially distancing. So I think here at Centennial, it's, it's gone well, and, and everybody's been abiding by the rules. And, yeah, it's been it's been a lot more work than what we're accustomed to. Um, you know, Sunday, at first Sunday after our meetings, I was – after our football coaches' meetings, I was in the bleachers uh, taping off, making sure everything was, was right, getting ready for that Friday. And, and we did the same thing this week, just double-checking to make sure that uh, everything's good for Friday. Well, and you have, you've done a really good job there as athletic director and obviously in your role as football coach as well. Uh, and really the, the entire staff there at Centennial High School and, and throughout the district, because we know these are, these are pretty challenging times. Hey, what would you say, and then we'll move on to some, some football talk here, but in your time, just give it a percentage. Uh, what percentage of your time are you spending right now taking care of those athletic director responsibilities? Uh, well, I'm fortunate um, this year, uh, Coach Pelkey and, and Coach Megan Moore, they've, they've kind of stepped up and really helped me out. Um, they've taken a lot off my plate in the past uh, three weeks. Once football really, we knew it was going uh, full speed ahead. Um, so, you know, um, meet with them daily. So I wouldn't say, you know, it's, it's about 50-50. Um, but, but still, you know, they, they're double checking and making sure that, that they're doing things correctly. But I, I've got to get a huge shout out to both of them. They've done a tremendous job helping me. Um, especially game days on Friday, and let me focus on uh, football and not have to work. But, um, you know, it's it's been time-consuming, um, like, like you mentioned, and it's different times. But just, just getting these athletes out here participating in, in volleyball, cross-country soccer, and, and football has been great. Coach, uh, it's, it's nice to have a couple people that you can lean on there, but obviously your leadership has been very important there at the school as well. I, I can vouch for that. Coach, let's talk football here. You're starting out 0 and 2, but you have a very young team. Uh, I know, you know, we we've been talking about uh, your sophomore group for a while now, and then obviously your your freshman group that's that's moving in. Not not to say that your juniors and seniors aren't uh, big time participants on your team as well, but let's face it, you've got a lot of younger guys who are participating. Talk about the attitude of your team right now. I mean, you're you're 0 and 2, but again, you're young. You played especially with Ravenwood, a really good team to start the season. Uh, you know, we were at a point where we didn't even know if we were going to be playing football. So just talk about where your team's at from a mental standpoint at this point in time. You know, at, at this point in time, I think I think they're in a, in a good state of mind. Um, yes, it's, it's been tough losing the first two games. But one thing that you saw, we saw from Ravenwood to Smyrna is – their improvement. Um, I'll be honest, uh, they, they came in, uh, you know, even we have 24 seniors, even out of the 24 seniors, there's only a very few that started last year. So, you know, our offensive linemen, we have three seniors uh, playing, but they, they didn't play at all last year. So, you know, kind of going in, opening up with Ravenwood, a uh, uh, very good team. Coach Sanders, his staff does a 
they do a great job. Um, you know, it, it was a tough challenge for us. And then we, we, you know, went out for kickoff and then we had to wait for two hours. Uh, so a, a young team, an inexperienced team, amped up, ready to go at seven o'clock. Then you have to come in and sit around for, for two hours um, and, and then go back out for kickoff. That was, that was tough on a young team. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest, I, I don't know if I had them ready after the, the two hour layover. And I uh, think coach, Daniels and his staff did a, did a better job than me to get his, get his guys ready to go um, after the lighting delay. Um, but, you know, you know, we were at quarterback, you know, we're splitting between uh, Cannon Plowman, who's a junior, and uh, Brandon Jones, who's a sophomore. Um, you saw their improvement uh, week two last week against Smyrna. And again, you know, we started out, we played uh, about a half a quarter at Smyrna, and then we went on a lightning delay. We was, we we're going to play Friday. We got the guys ready to play Friday. And then we, um, decided uh, Coach Williams wanted to play Saturday morning. So, I mean, it is it is what it is. I'm just glad these guys are able to play right now. Coach, this is only game three, but you, especially with a young team, probably not ideal that this is already your second region game. Uh, you know, I, I, for you, I'm sure you would have liked to play maybe two or three that were non-region, but the schedule is what it is, like you talked about. Uh, but talk about the challenges of, hey, we're in game three and it's already – region game number two yeah it's it's tough on us you know because you know in this region every every region game is very important um you pretty much you need to win two uh to secure a, a playoff spot um so this this is going to be huge and and i'll be honest it's going to be a tough task for us friday night um but our guys have practiced well um this week um you know we're they're going to come out uh giving giving it everything we got um like you said but you know facing Independence week three second region game of the year is is pretty tough, um, but it's it's going to be a huge challenge for us. But I, I think the guys will be ready Friday night and they'll they'll give us everything they got. Well, and I see you've got uh, uh, stands there behind you. Those things will be filled up as much as we can tonight, but uh, certainly uh, not as much as, as you normally would have. Now last year's game, and of course, it's a way different way different team. They've got a different team. 45-14, that game was played at Independence. But, again, your teams are really different. What what style of game do you think is going to best suit you in terms of tonight's game? Is it going to be more of an offensive, wide open game, more of a ball control game? What would you like to see out of tonight's uh, game? If, if we can keep uh, Campbell off the field, it would be great for us. Um, He's, he's an outstanding quarterback um, for independent. So if, if we can control the ball, um, keep their offense off the field, um, you know, and just eat up some clock, you know, even if we don't get some points, but if we can keep that clock running for us, um, like you said, and, and have ball control would be huge. Um, man, I, you know, I've, I've been around this league for a while, but with watching him again, Summit, you know, um, him rolling out, you know, and he has – I love those quarterbacks that have the option. If, if it's not there, they can tuck it and run it. And you can tell, man, he's a he's a superb athlete. Um, you know, uh, Jerry Jones, one of our assistant principals here, spent some time in Indy before he came here, and he and he talks about wh what type of you know high character kid he is, man. No, those type of kids you want to see succeed, um, that that are great on and off the field. Um, and he, he, I'll be honest, he scares me because when he gets out there. And he can run, and he can also then he can sling it down the field about 30, 40 yards. So uh, we're going to have to be very disciplined in the secondary, uh, defensively, and and not whatever coverage we in, we have to make sure that, that we stay in that coverage and not try to come up because you know that's what's going to happen. We're going to think he's going to run, and then he's going to dump it right over our, our heads. Um, but and like you said, you know, so offensively, if if you know switching Jones and. Uh, Plowman out will help us out tonight. Um, you know, they're, they're two different styles of, of quarterbacks. Um, so hopefully doing that will kind of throw their defense off, off a little bit and, and let us open up a few things for us and let us move the ball a little bit. Coach, you talked about your team being young. And uh, like you said, and really you're talking about that Ravenwood game earlier, they do have some guys maybe with uh, quite a bit more experience than you guys. I think that delay in the weather, you talked about Coach Daniels having his team ready after the, after the delay, but you know, some of that has to has to be attributed to having a young team as well. And then you look at the Smyrna game, it's an uneven kind of start as well. You have to come back and play a couple of days later. It's early in the morning. And then you guys get down 28 nothing, but you battled right back. I mean, you have to be proud of that. It wasn't like uh, you had the twos and threes in. You guys cut the lead from 28 
nothing to 28-17. You had to take some positives from that. Uh, yes, we did. Um, you know, uh, I approached it a little bit different uh, Saturday morning than what I usually do. We got in here and, and did a little uh, cardio with, uh, and had uh, music in the background. The kids really got into it. So it was about 25 minutes, just get them loose, get them, get them awake. Um, they had fun. And then we came in here, we ate our little, little meal before we left. And it was more, a little more relaxed. Um, I, I probably get, get uptight too much. And then you can probably see the reflection of, of, of the kids. Um, so, you know, I just told the coaches, I said, let me stay away from a little bit. Y'all let them relax and have fun. It's a Saturday morning. We get to play uh, high school football at 10 o'clock. So let's, let's just let them have fun. And, and you could tell they, they went out and had fun. Um, Saturday, yeah, we, we battled 28, uh, 17, you know, we had an opportunity. Um, you know, if you look at their touchdowns, man, uh, one of the refs came to me during, at the end of the game, you know, three big plays, you know, that, that opening kickoff that they returned really, it, it hurt us. Um, Cause again, you know, we're, we're just, we're not there yet. We're close and we're getting there, but we're a little big at when we first walk out there. We just, we're waiting for a play to happen instead of attacking. Um, you know, we're waiting for somebody to, to make a play. Um, so Saturday morning we went out and, you know, we didn't score the first drive. We moved the ball well and it gave us some confidence. Um, then the next series of defense had to stop and you could tell the look and the feeling on the sideline like, wow, you know, we, we can do this. You know, we're able to do this. And so, we got a little confidence. We stopped them. We uh, even uh, turned a caused a turnover. Um, you know, we even we had a field goal. It should have been twenty eight twenty because we had a, a field goal blocked. Um, so we 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 were right there in it. And I felt like you know we had the opportunity to win. Um, if we didn't, I feel like we didn't get down that fourteen nothing a big guy on Thursday. If we would have played the full game uh, Saturday, it, it might have been a little bit different. I'm not saying we would have won, but I think it would have been a little bit closer. Um, I'm really I'm really proud of the guys. You know because. You know, even losing the game, starting out 0-2, you, you know, a lot of times, I mean, you've been around, Coach, uh, get down on each other and all, you know, this this and that. You know, we're not going to be very good this year, so maybe the intensity level and the, and the practice is, is not as hard. Man, these guys, they're staying on each other. They're making – they're holding each other accountable, making sure we're, we're getting on and off the field. Um, and there's there's no walking going on um, during during practice. Um, they're, they're holding each other accountable, and that's what, that's what I really like to see. Um, and, and, and that's what I'm proud of because, again, we're a young team and, and they could all just it we could easily fall apart, but they're, they're still fighting. Um, and, you know, no matter what the outcome is on uh, Friday, Friday night, we're going to have to move on next week to Siegel. So, um, and these guys, they're getting better each week. And, and that, that I told them after Ravenwood, I want to see an improvement from week one to week 10. Well, I'm confident that you're going to do it. Like you said, you're playing such young guys. You mentioned Brendan Jones, who's spending some time there uh, platooning uh, quarterback for you. Uh, and then, you know, I, we talked about this last year as well. I mean, your, your sophomores had a lot of success last year. I mean, they're, they're playing in the big lights now, but that has to help that they've got the confidence of knowing really in WCS, they were one of the dominant teams last year at the freshman level. Yes. And I mean, they want to win, um, you know, we got two sophomores starting on, on the offensive line, um, and they've gotten better each week. Um, we have our third guy. He just got cleared this week. Um, he's going to see some playing time. So, again, you're going to see three sophomores out there on the offensive line, a sophomore quarterback, a junior quarterback. Um, our other, um, Xavion Haddix, one of our tailbacks, he, he's injured. So, he's he's not with us at this time. But but you've also got Josh Forsey in there, who's, who's a junior. Um, and then our, our entire receiving core will be back next year for, from – most part so again you know it's you know Cannon Plowman splits time at quarterback receiver you've got Cannon Brock who's who's a junior we've got Alex Pierce who's a, who's a sophomore um you know not to take away from our seniors you know Ethan Flew who's a senior but again he's only played in two games uh so I mean it, it is what it is that experience like you said in this league counts you know and it's when you haven't been on the field facing Ravenwood or Independence and and even though the, the stands might not be full like they have been, they were still pretty, pretty loud last home game. So, Well, without question, there's no nights off in WCS. And you don't have to look very far to go back and look, take a look at your team last year. I talk about this all the time. You know, you face a Smyrna team who ends up being the second or third seed in their league yeah. this year in a non-region non matchup, and you really dominate that game. So, uh, like you said, it's going to be tough for a young team. We're excited about watching your team tonight, Coach. I appreciate you spending time with us today. We wish you good luck. Thanks for being here today.
Thank you. When you talk to Blake, tell him to take it easy on me tonight. <laughs> we'll be right back in just a few minutes to talk to Coach Blake, head football coach at Independence High School. Welcome back to the Coach's Preview Show. We're talking about tonight's football matchup, Independence High School at Centennial High School. We've already talked to Coach Kreisky in our previous segment now. Coach Scott Blade, head coach of Independence. Coach Blade, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Coach, you open up the season in what I have kind of deemed an instant classic. Just what a great game. It was. It was it may not have been as exciting for you as a coach. I'm sure it was nerve-wracking, but watching that thing from the sidelines, it was just so exciting. Played a really good uh, summit team, and like you alluded to, uh, before that game, let's not kid ourselves. That team would do really well at the 6A level, too. A uh, great version of the border battle. Uh, you come up short 40 to 34. In fact, you lead all but 22 seconds. But you had to take a lot of positives out of it, especially uh, from your new quarterback, Jackson Campbell. Obviously, he's an experienced player, but as a starter at the varsity level, I, I took a look at his stats before the show. 15 for 25. 220 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And then you're looking at 14 carries, 152 yards and two touchdowns. What a performance by Jackson Campbell. Yeah, um, you hit on it. A uh, lot of you know, disappointing outcome or ending. Um, and we felt like um, we had our chances there uh, in the fourth quarter and really the offense went flat and um, you know the quarterback for Summit just took over. Um, took over that game and uh, did a great job for them rallying the troops and uh, them coming from behind. We did not finish the game quite like we had, uh, obviously the way we had liked, uh, but a ton of positives. Um, you know, uh, you know, that being, we had talked about that uh, leading up to that game being like a first scrimmage almost because of all those unknown variables. And um, so some of those things, as far as penalties, I think we, you know, we were okay for the first time. Um, turnovers. I thought both teams did a great job of protecting the ball, both teams. And those are usually um, some glaring uh, defects, if you will, week one. Um, I thought both teams were in relatively good shape. Um, it, it was a great game. And unfortunately, we came out fortunate for them. They won. Uh, fortunate for us, um, came up on the short side of it. But we definitely had our opportunities. And we definitely feel uh, confident and um, that we're going in the right direction with the right people. Well, Coach, you mentioned that, and that's something I noticed, too, in watching your game. The quality of play, it really looked like week six or seven. It didn't look like week one with no scrimmages, no jamboree, and really uh, your practice has been a little bit limited compared to other years. I mean, it was pretty impressive that it was that clean a game. It was, it, well, it's been a lot limited because of the, it's not just the days, it's, you know, it's the heat, it's lightning, it's things that, you know, yesterday, we have not had a normal day yet, um, including yesterday and looking forward into uh, today as well. Um, and, you know, again, the, we're really proud of those kids, their, their level of resiliency and their level of probably focus um, more so than, you know, in recent years, for us at least, um, knowing that, you know, it's so, um, uh, the, the time was not on our hand and that the kids um, needed to grasp concepts faster than normal. Um, I, and again, I thought the game, like I said, those it, some of those week one games and I've watched some film, they're just, they're ugly. They're riddled with uh, some stuff. And we, we obviously, both sides, after reviewing the tape, you, you know, would say the same thing, but for the first game, you know, really, you know, pretty pleased with a, a lot of things there. Coach, you know, something I think a lot of coaches are saying, but I always think about you uh, when I say this, because you said it early on and I thought it was a great attitude to have about it. You have said we're treating this week and every week like it could be our last game. Cause let's face it. It really could be. And I think that showed in your team's performance. I really do. Yeah, and they're they're playing hard and they're practicing. The thing is, you know, it's not just what everybody you know. It's we, everybody wants games. You know that 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 is what it is. The playing football 
in this day in 2020 is more about just games. It is about gathering. It's about overcoming. It's about providing hope. Uh, the games are just, they're, they're, um, they're really the, the, the cherry on top, if you will. We're not guaranteed. Heck, last week, it didn't, obviously, it didn't work out that we were able to get one in. But the time together, the time to build and, and to work towards something is what it's all about. And that, you know, I think that's what we're taking away from it. That's what my kids are, uh, they're doing a great job of responding to that call. Coach, you mentioned last week's game. You were set to host CPA. Um, you're going to play Friday night. You try to move it to Thursday. Uh, the weather's not looking great. End up canceling the game altogether. Talk about what went into that decision. And it had to be a tough decision for you guys to make, knowing that every week is so precious. But you're not the only ones. You're seeing games just pop up right. all the time where people can't play. Talk about what went into yeah. that decision last week. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, so obviously we moved. Uh, Engel and I had talked Tuesday, you know, and moved made a decision to try and get this in Thursday because it looked bad for Friday, like like much of the mid state. Uh, we waited around for two hours, knowing that the first day of school is Friday. We couldn't wait all night, and it just so happened right as we canceled, darn near nine o'clock, uh, the clouds open. I mean, it just torrential downpour. Um, so it wasn't going to happen Thursday. At spending a couple hours of talking about uh, some alternatives. Friday did not look like it was going to be um, a viable option. You know, we, we left that open as an option Tuesday, Wednesday, seeing if this weather pattern was going to change, hit us early, whatever. Saturday, so there's administrators, there's coaches, there's officials, there's ADs, there's everybody there. And it just was not something um, that we chose to do. Both parties did not like that idea. Um, and there's reasons why. Uh, there's just, at, at that point, um, it was cut our losses and let's move on. You know, without injuries, we got another game. Um, it was a non-region game. I get the fact that, hey, it's, we're, we're all, you know, if, if you're under that same um, mental mentality of it, it's not just about the games the games you you know obviously are important but there's a lot of decisions behind that and doing what's best for um everybody involved um and, and there's multiple decisions there's multiple thoughts that go into that decision and we decided that um you know we had an op we have an open week we do have an add out you know we, we may fill it there we'll see you know, we've already been in contact with Pearl Cone and, you know, moving on later, we've rescheduled some JV games and freshman games. So it's a, what I don't think people get, it's a constant of trying to figure out what's best for the, the program, the kids, and all the people that are involved. Um, and, you know, Friday night, Thursday, whatever, did not work out the way we all wanted. We still got this week. And hopefully next and hopefully the week after that. And we'll keep moving ahead and trying to find the best uh, situation for our kids. Well, and, you know, you mentioned all those things that are going on. Certainly this year, besides being the head coach, you've got a, way more responsibilities than maybe you've had in the past. Let's talk a little bit about tonight's game. Last year's game, which obviously has nothing to do with tonight's game. Your teams are different. Uh, it was 45-14. Uh, but then I, I did think about this because Centennial, they were able to work out their game. So they start on Thursday. Then they decide they're going to play Saturday morning. Do you think that's a factor tonight? In fact, that they've had a little bit of a short week, you had an extra week off. What, what do you think that does for tonight's game or does it matter at all? I don't know what they think. I know for us, you know, the, that definitely uh, my team will be fresh. My team will be good my team prepared last week for the same type of defense, same similar offense. Um, my kids are hungry. Um, my kids are ready to go. Um, does it affect on a short week? I don't know. Uh, depends. You know, we didn't, we, we only exchanged week, week one for both of us. So I don't know if anybody got hurt, anybody got lame, anybody, you know, position changes from week one to week two. And again, those are things I 
don't care to worry about. I worry about my team and my uh, uh, how we're preparing uh, in this time. And uh, I feel like my team is you know on the right path. Coach, uh, we, we talked about Jackson Campbell, your senior leader there, having such a great game. But, you know, a name that stood out to me when I looked at your stats uh, for the Summit game, Trey Hartwell, only a sophomore, 13 carries, 64 yards and a touchdown. And then you had another sophomore, Ty Lockwood, that receiver who had a big game. Talk about those guys. I mean, you've got to be really excited about them, not only for this year, but the years to come. Yeah, absolutely. They're both uh, potential uh, scholarship guys down the road. Uh, Trey came to us a year ago. We kept him on the varsity so we can get used to, you know, a varsity game speed, if you will. Uh, Ty moved into us to the summer, um, both just 15 years old, both uh, incredible athleticism and com- incredible potential. Um, and they're going to be great guys, uh, you know, moving ahead with this program. And, you know, uh, Ty is a, uh, you know, a little more versatile than what we've had, you know, at, you know, at some of our spots, he's a, a big six, four, six, five, two, 12, two, 15 kid that can run, can catch, can block, get physical. So uh, we hope, uh, you know, he turns into the guy we think he's going to be. Both those guys are bigger than normal 15 year olds, um, stronger um, and really have uh, a ton of potential. Coach, you talked about, uh, couple of hiccups late there offensively, but you score 34 points. And, and really, I think maybe if you look at the final score, people don't realize really how well your defense played for a lot of that game. I mean, in that first half, to me, it stood out. Uh, what a great job your defense was doing. Yeah, I think the thing people don't get uh, is that when you're a big time guy, as the, you know, the Wade brothers are, they you can only contain them so much. And we can yell at our defense and be mad about it, but he's better. Um, and it's kind of like when we had TJ or some of those guys we've had in the past, you can, you might contain him and then you look up and he's got 200 yards receiving, you know, and um, you know, those big time guys, they have a way of taking over. Um, unfortunately, we were on the short end of that um, or the wrong side of that, but uh Credit to him. He ran tough and, and they stuck with their game plan and other guys made plays too. Um, and then when it was time when we needed a couple tackles, uh, we didn't do it. And then offensively just kind of, you know, stopped, uh, you know, doing the easier things that we were doing all game. So just in the fourth quarter, things kind of went south and um, it's unfortunate, but um, we feel like we got some of those things corrected and ready to move on. What other kind of improvements are you looking for from the defense? Uh, you mentioned tackling earlier. Any any other key things that you've worked on? Yeah, defensive line play, uh, defensive line play, uh, squeezing the tackles. Our defensive tackles doing a better job with their gap responsibility. Uh, tackling has uh, been a big emphasis. Um, corners, we got beat twice in cover three deep. Um, that absolutely cannot happen. Any football coach will tell you that. If you're getting beat deep in cover three or cover two up the middle, you're something's wrong. Um, and unfortunately, uh, you know, we, we've worked on that. We've addressed it. Those are things that would have been nice to, you know, get out of the way during, you know, scrimmages because you just don't see it. You just don't get a chance to uh, see it enough. And seven on sevens, that's what seven on sevens are great for the back end of the game. Um, but no excuses. Uh, we made those mistakes. Um, we thought we had addressed a lot of those things pretty well, and uh, they still bit us. And um, we think we've done a better job addressing them moving forward. Sam Hankey had a pretty solid night kicking. I did miss one extra point, but your special teams, uh, uh, again, I think that stood out watching your game. I've seen a lot of miscues special teams wise, but for the most part, uh, both of your teams did a pretty good job. Coach, tonight, what are some keys to victory for you uh, offensively and or defensively tonight? Well, starting off with special teams, they need to continue to do well. Cooper Allen is a senior punter who really flipped the field for us well. Uh, Sam needs to continue to give us a chance, putting that ball in the end zone. He's got the leg for it. Uh, that one extra point he missed, it was a bad snap, a little bit of bobble. The timing was off. I don't necessarily put that one on him. Unfortunately, he gets the 
credit for it. Defensively, we got to tackle better. We got to do better, you know, squeezing the defense, uh, excuse me, the offensive line and compressing the holes, the gaps. Offensively, man, we're, we're excited about what we're doing there. We're excited about uh, the changes and the evolution that's taking place. And we need to keep the ball out of their hands. Um, you know, that means the turnovers. We need to cut down. We, like I said, we had a thing, we had four penalties on our offensive line. And the offensive line, our offensive line, we thought played really well uh, the first game. I'd like to cut those down. So it's just making the, the transition for us. It's week one to week two. We've had a couple good weeks of practice. Um, we're eager to see, you know, where these guys are at. Coach, I appreciate you joining us. I know you're busy uh, getting ready for tonight's game. Good luck. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, and thanks for everybody involved. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of the Coach's Preview Show. We'll see you next week.